After e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, white is playing the Spanish opening, we go on with f5. Now, in this video, we're just gonna go through some extra lines that have been missed throughout the entire saga of how to beat the Spanish. So one of the line goes with knight c3 immediately. As we know from the as we know, we have to take the pawn, and when knight takes back, we play knight f6. In sorry, in one of the previous videos, we went through uh, moves like queen e2 or bishop takes or maybe d3 very normal moves i think this was the fourth video of the saga and in this example we're gonna go through what happens after knight takes in f6 okay take back with the queen and develop and now two options one of them is castle if white castle straight away what to do bishop e7 remember that white has already lost the advantage of being white in this position Blast got three pieces developed, white only got two, although white is castle, but the thing is that we will be able to castle as well. If white plays d3, the best move now is h6, you don't need bishop g5 to come. And now, if Bla if white plays knight a4, you play knight a5, and that's it, you're going to be able to castle simply because you're going to trade the knight for this bishop. You're playing with the bishop pair, so that move is not good. What if instead of bishop c4, our opponent plays a4? How do we deal with this? Now white wants to play bishop c4, prevent us from castle, and also have a shelter in the square a2. What to do now? Well, castle now. Before it's too late. And after bishop c4, check, just move the king, you're completely fine. Rook to e1, developing the pieces. d6. Black development is smooth. We got pieces on an open file, and there's a weakness now. The weakness is very simple. We've got control of the f file, the bishop might go to g4 and then we're going to be even just trading everything and go to a winning endgame. So after white playing the best move, which is h3, knight to d4 comes now and this is it. You see, if our opponent doesn't play h3 and you can play bishop f3, knight d4, it's completely over. You know that there's a pawn in d3, the, white, the light square bishop can't go and help uh, the defense of the f3 piece. Therefore, bishop g4 is a super strong move, you're winning material, you're winning the position and everything. If white plays h3, it seems like it stops that from happening, but now you play knight d4 and, you, and it is still happening. So you're going to be taking, takes, and then after you, you can even trade everything, and then you've got a bishop going to h3 as well. The rook's also attacking h3 with the support of the bishop. So what if the knight takes instead to nullify all of that attack? It doesn't work because queen takes with check, we win a pawn, king moves, queen takes in d4. There's nothing here. Development of the bishop with tempo. Okay, queen h4 is the best move. Don't give your opponent too much activity. Going to b2 and then rook b1 would have been annoying. White queen now to d2. Continuing development, just play c6. And we're going to close the line here. Black just has a solid advantage. You can't really move any piece without a disaster occurring. The queen can't really move away from the second rank because of this uh, completely winning sacrifice in h3. The queen will have to stick around there. The bishop can't move away, otherwise rook f2... Might be a potential idea. This is completely winning position. So let's make it from the start. And let's look at this line again, but with a little di difference. Knight c3, okay. Take, take, knight f6. Take, queen f6. In the line where white castles, you play bishop e7, d3. Oh, and by the way, instead of d3, if white plays a4 straight away, with the idea of playing bishop c4 right now. Here you actually don't castle already, but you play e4, attacking the knight. And this is because our opponent didn't play d3. So remember this pattern. When your opponent doesn't play d3, then you have a chance of playing e4. And now the knight will have to move, but there's nowhere to go except e1. Position is ridiculous. This also allows you to play d5, and then castle, a completely winning position. And so here, what to do? The knight will have to go to e1, and now surprisingly, the best move is a6, which doesn't really stop our opponent from going to c4 with the bishop and preventing us from castling. However, you play now queen to f5, the idea of playing d5, and that's going to be it. It's going to be just just an advantage. White is in white. How is white even going to castle? d3 maybe looks like a move that makes sense. Okay, you play d5. Now, if the bishop moves away. You play bishop e6, developing, and you threaten to cast alongside with the rook, attacking on the on the opponent queen. Taking the pawn doesn't help, because you take back, and now you still have control over the squares f3 and d3. And obviously, a move like f3 here seems to be making a threat, you know, opening the file for the rook, 
it looks good but this just loses because bishop takes bishop pawn takes doesn't work obviously because bishop check the king will have to uh, move i mean the rook will have to be pinned whatever you, you're gonna win the game completely because the you know you do this but then check and the king moves that you're gonna checkmate but either way you're gonna checkmate so in this position if rook takes bishop bishop to d6 is the next move so as said the pawn can't really take this pawn so bishop to e3 does this work no, because now position is still evaluated. Minus 3, almost minus 4. After long castling, you have a threat of bishop h2. And it's just a horrible position. So back in this position, we're mentioning the, we're mentioning the line with a4 straight away. The idea is to play uh, bishop c4 and then retreat the bishop and stop you from castling. You know that you can play e4, knight e1, and now a6. Bishop to c4, queen f5. The idea of playing d5. So if d3, d5. Instead of bishop moving away, what if white takes this pawn with an attack on our queen? Okay, just take back. And now the best by white will be queen to d5. Calming down the strong initiative of the black player with the great development that we have. And also allowing... Well, the best move here is to take the queen. After bishop takes back, it looks like this pawn is in some trouble. It's isolated. It's a bit ugly. And this is, by the way, our opponent playing the absolute best moves. Okay, bishop f5, just defend it. Don't worry about the bishop taking your knight, because this will be an open game, and this is fine. This double isolated pawn, it's not good to see, but it's actually just okay. f3 by y, the idea of developing, finally, and reducing uh, the influence of our strong pawn in the center. Doesn't work because of bishop c5 check. Remember this, king moves, and now e3. The pawn is protected, and position is just better for uh, the black player. So let's make an example here. How... How, just to illustrate how strong the position is for the black player. If white plays c3 with the idea of playing b4, and then play potentially rook a2, and then rook, e, uh, rook e2 to finally put pressure on that pawn, because the knight can't really move here, d3 or knight c2, none of this is possible. Castling, and you should be winning material. And, it, and the bishop can't really be defended. It's just really not good, because then you can play knight b4, the bishop will have to move, and either way the bishop is going to go to d5, and then you're going to trade it. So if the bishop just go to d5, right, you take, take, and now e2, and the rook is trapped. And just a few moves ago, if instead of c3, right, white plays g4 with the idea of kicking the bishop away, you, play, you have to play bishop g2, well, e2 is still the winning move. And so, rook to g1, long castle is just such a computer move. Completely careless of the fact that we could have won the exchange. Completely careless of the bishop being attacked by a pawn. And how is this possible? Our opponent can literally save the bishop by taking a piece. And then win the piece in g1. Uh, and, then win, and then win the piece in f5. And now when the bishop has taken our knight. Again another ignoring move. Rook to d1. Boom. How about that? If our opponent does take our bishop in f5 now. We recapture the bishop in c6. We're done a full piece, but position is completely winning. If white moves the knight, let's say knight to d3, for example, you just take the rook and that's checkmate. If white plays, well, white will have to develop the piece. If b4 to develop in fianchetto and protect the rook in order to save the last rank, the thing is you just play bishop d4 and uh, you're attacking the rook, the rook will have to move. But the bishop, but, but the bishop knight is completely pinned, it just can't move. And after rook b1, rook e8, position evaluated minus 7. And there's no coming back here. I mean, the rook can't just go away because you're, you're attacking the knight. The knight is technically pinned. King to g2 maybe, but it's not going anywhere. Maybe f4 would be an ambitious idea. But any time when this happens, obviously you can just play bishop takes. And king takes, and then you can take the, the, the knight. And yeah, take it from here. By the way, in this position, straight after playing e4... We went through knight e1, but, you know, just in case you're wondering, bishop takes in c6 first. Well, just take with the pawn, and again, the knight is still left with no squares to go. That's what happens when your development is terrible. You're going to have to go to e1, except now this is even easier because you've got, you know, the knight moves, and then you've got all of these unbelievable center. Bishop d6, queen to e5, castling, and you, you, you're going for the attack on the opponent king side. It gets very easy now. So let's take it from the start. And let's see more of it. So the same line. So f5, knight to c3, right? You take. Take, and now knight f6. We're looking at knight takes in f6. 
something that we haven't seen throughout the entire Spanish saga. Okay, queen takes in f6. And now, earlier we went through castle and all of the things that can happen next. What about a4 right now? Remember that this a4 move is not just a random move, I'm just playing just because. It's the it's one of the best moves, most thematic moves. The idea is to give bishop c4 stopping us from castling and going to a2. But you've seen how it's just not working. Well, this seems to be the right moment to play it, but you play e4. Remember that this is the Schliemann Gambit. And it's something that and it's extremely violent. It has its downside, but it has the a very important feature of avoiding any well known theory from white. So knight, let's look at this idea now. Knight to g1, kind of the only thing left to do at that point. Well, I mean, that could be queen to e2. But then you play queen e7 and the knight will have to go to g1. So go and watch the other videos to make sure to, to understand how to take that type of uh, idea. What about knight to g1 now? Okay, a6. Bishop to c4. Does it stop us from castling? No, because of knight e5. The bishop to a2. Does it stop us from castling? No, because of d5. Boom! White didn't expect that. Now we can castle unless white takes the free pawn. However, bishop to c5. And now we're starting our attack on f2. So that was a beautiful pawn sacrifice. You give the d pawn, our opponent has to move another, you know, has to give another bishop move. So instead of developing, I mean, he didn't have to take the pawn, but then that means you can play c6, you can play bishop e6, you can castle, you can do what you want. Bishop c5 comes now. Queen e2 defending the checkmate square. Bishop g4 closes the game. F3, does it stop every uh, the the very strong attack? No, because take. Knight f3, castle long. Attacking the bishop. If h3 now attacking the knight, what to do? Bishop h5. Does this mean that our opponent gets a chance to maybe survive out of this? Because it looks like g4, you know, might work. But obviously, let's see. If d4, right, making a fork, allowing the development of the bishop, making a skewer. If d4 looks like a normal move, you just, but you just take it. The knight can't move. So after bishop e3 developing, simply take this bishop, you're completely winning. There was nothing there. So in this position, what about g4, does it work? No, because, well, take, take, then white can take back with the bishop and... We lose the advantage. Rook takes the d5 is the best move. And we're up a piece unless our opponent decides to take our bishop. And now we're no longer up a piece. But now we are. Knight takes f3 check. The king has to move. How to capitalize here? Rook to e5. The queen will have to move. If queen to e1, you're obviously winning with this move. Rook check. The only move is to take back with the queen. And then you take. And uh, the king shouldn't really take back because you got the queen infiltrating. If rook takes, you got check. And the only way to block is with the rook, but the rook is pinned. You can put more attack on the pinned piece and blah, blah, blah. So in this position after rook e5, what if queen goes to c4? Does it save anything? No, because knight d4. And now we're accessing c6. Rook to f1, stopping that from happening and attacking our queen. Rook h to e8, completely ignoring that. We're going to go to this square soon enough. And uh, we're also planning, I mean, we're planning check. Rook has to take. And then checkmate, and uh, even if that doesn't happen, okay, rook takes queen is obviously not possible because of the checkmate. What about d3? That is mate. You've got check, rook takes, check, king goes there, check, king goes there, checkmate. Right, we've seen enough of that. Let's move on and play bishop b5 now, f5. And let's go through this. d4. This is the main move. Okay, now we take, and after knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, and as we know from some of the previous videos, we play c6 now, winning the pawn in e5, because when the bishop moves, let's say bishop c4 or anywhere, you can play queen a5 check, and that recaptures the pawn in, in a5, uh, in e5. However, there is something that hasn't been mentioned in the previous videos. One of them is in the line with bishop to c4, and queen check, knight to c3, the white player is at least developing, queen takes, and after castle, d5. Now, in the previous video, the one in the saga, and I think this was the third video of the saga, we went through f3, 
very logical and natural move. And also bishop to e2, saving the bishop from the attack of the pawn. In this video we're going to go through this move, f4, immediately attacking the queen. And if we take this will allow our, uh, our opponent to develop. And uh, the queen development here will come with a threat on, uh, on the square f7, f8 as well. And the queen check in d4 doesn't win anything because you can't really go for the bishop because of the very strong battery of the white player. So what to do after f4 has just been played? Bishop c5 check. King moves. Queen to d4. Simply ask for trades. And it's kind of the best thing to do. You see, if the bishop just retreats in order not to lose material, remember that you have a pass pawn in e4. That your upper pawn and that pawn will be supported with knight f6, you know, the bishop to f5, castle and so on. Pawn chain here in the center is extremely powerful. Your best move now here is to take, take, and then just knight f6. Position evaluated over minus 3. So at this point, the only thing left to do for white is to trade queens. Okay, take, take. Try to reduce the initiative at least. Maybe play knight e2, but still nothing's happening. Okay, so knight e2 attacking the bishop, bishop f6. Bishop to b3, saving the bishop, knight to e7. c3, allowing another square for the bishop. Let's see how to take the game, how to capitalize in this game. Bishop to g4, knight to d4. Looks, It looks like our opponent might have a chance of, you know, maybe be annoying or something. No, because take, take, and now knight f5, attacking the weak square. h3, attacking the bishop. Bishop e2, attacking the rook. Rook e1, and now h5 this is the best move obviously if rook takes bishop then knight g3 recaptures the rook and wins material king to g1 getting out of the fork okay what well, bishop to d3 and this is how you end this game you're completely winning you've been completely winning for a while but this is the uh, very strong chain that can never be broken let's look at this for example knight to e3 here best move is strangely enough take take well it's not very strange because we'll, you want to trade pieces and also it's good to give up the knight for the bishop at least our opponent doesn't have a bishop anymore okay now castle attacking the pawn f4 you're winning that pawn no matter what pawn can't push can't be defended g3 defends it but then h4 you're threatening to take h4 and then win f4 uh if king to g2 to give some protection to both that's fine take take and now rook to f6 doubling up the rooks and winning this pawn finally the rook in f1 can't really go because of this bishop. Now let's look at another line. This is going to be completely insane. Absolutely insane, but it's the best move. And uh, it was un it was once played by an opponent in a, in a game on chess.com against me who beat me. And uh, I eventually he got banned. So he cheated that game. He played with like some crazy inaccuracy and he got banned. But I did take a note of that line, and here's what the computer plays. You're not going to believe it. So after f5 and d4 main move, take, take, as we know, take, take. And now c6, and I thought, okay, I've won the pawn. My opponent doesn't know about this, of course, because he's like his rating was around pretty similar to mine. It's like 2200 on chess.com. And I was like, and, and I thought, okay, he, he doesn't know this line. He's going to have to move the bishop somewhere and then queen a5 check. I win a central pawn. I play d5 and I'm a very happy man. However, he played this insane move, knight to c3. Why? This is very deep. And this is the best move. And also the best move by black is to now capture this bishop. And now white captures the pawn in e4. So this is the best move because instead of losing a pawn, the computer prefers to take the initiative and says, you know what, take that extra pawn, I don't care. In this case, I'll also give you a bishop because of this thematic move, knight e4, and the very strong pawn in e5 supporting these two squares, d6 and f6, and the pawn in e4, the central pawn that we had, the only central pawn, is gone. White is planning to simply play knight to d6, or to at least keep the threat of playing that. The, now you have to play it very, very accurately in order to retain the advantage, so if you want to keep the advantage, you have to know this line because you do have a tiny advantage now, but for a human, it's a bit ugly to play this position. And white is actually, he's, got, he's done a piece, but it's, it's an amazing position. Here, the best move is d5. You want to keep the control of the center, quickly develop all your pieces because you're backward in development. And you want to have a pawn in the center, at least. Now, your best by white is to take ampersand. Obviously, he's got his pass pawn now. 
it looks very scary. As, as soon as this happened, I already began, I already began suspecting that my opponent was cheating because, like, how could a human go for this line? Especially because I, I don't think he knew how to beat the Schliemann. But even then, I continued playing, and eventually, I lost to the uh, to to my own inaccuracies. Anyway, knight f6 is the best move. Develop bishop to g5, most active reply to pin that knight. Queen a5 check. I'm pinning it. And now, our opponent will have to be careful. This cannot be blocked with the pawn. Because obviously the knight is falling. And yes, our opponent might be able to recapture that knight uh, by pinning it maybe. But at least you get to develop. You can play bishop d6, you can castle. Worst case scenario, I mean, you, you are the upper piece anyway. So in this position, instead of c3, let's look at this move. Okay, if queen to d2, obviously this is a great chance to calm down the initiative. Queen takes, king cannot take because then knight e4 check and we we go up 300 points in material. So after knight 3 captures, the initiative of our opponent is completely over bishop to d6, completely winning game, extra material, and an even better position at this point. And so in this, and so in this position, after queen a5 check, it only makes sense to play bishop d2 and keep the game going. B4, blocking it. And now a move like e3 doesn't work. A3 here to put more pressure on this on this pawn because you'll just play queen e5 and you're winning a piece. F3 to protect it, that's fine. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes back. Queen takes back. And uh, that's it. Just remember that you're up a piece, right? It's about This is about consolidating the advantage. So in this position, after playing b4, what if our opponent first takes down knight? Fine, take back. And now... Remember, we're threatening to make a check. So after castling, queen to d5 comes. Now we're giving extra support to the capture of the pawn in d6. We should be able to win a bishop to b4. Seems that it can save the thing, but no. Queen to d1, rook a to d1, bishop to d7. Rook, rook f to e1 check, king to f7. That rook isn't going anywhere. And this is how we consolidated the advantage. This point is isolated, it's not going anywhere, but how do we continue this? It seems like we can't really develop anything. You can't play bishop g7 or h6 or anything, because rook e7 loses immediately, so you got to be careful. The best move here is rook to c8. So if white makes any move, let's say a3, right? Just play rook to c8. And you're going to be able to pile up the pressure on uh, on that square, on c6 and win that pawn. So you might, you might argue, what if instead of a3, right, why play c4 with the idea of playing c5? And that pawn, that pawn structure becomes kind of annoying. Well, okay, rook to g8. And after c5, rook to g4, attacking the bishop. Bishop to c3 just loses to b6. And we're going to take the pawn. If pawn takes, then this pawn remains isolated. The rook gets developed. If the pawn pushes, it looks dangerous. But after bishop c6 and the pawn pushing down... Remember that you have rook check, king moves, and now simply rook to d8. There's nothing there. And back in this position, instead of bishop, and back in this position, instead of bishop c3, what if bishop a3? Okay, well, rook to c4, put more pressure on uh, c5. Rook to c1 will be a mistake because he will just take, take, and now you're reducing the initiative a lot. And here, a couple of moves ago, if instead of rook c1, what if b4, creating this pawn chain? Well, you will close the whole thing with a5. And now here, there's no coming back. You can't just save this. We, we are going to dismantle the, this pawn chain. Besides, we're still up a piece. If pawn takes, then you just take back. You're going to attack on the rook and attack on this pawn. You're going to attack on the bishop and attack on that pawn. So in this position, by the way, a few moves ago, if you remember, after king just gone to f7, you might have been looking at this sacrifice, but it doesn't go anywhere. Rook check, we have to take. Pawn takes back. The rook comes with an attack on this bishop. And now here you play bishop to e6. And yes, this pawn looks like it's going to be a problem. But, you know, you can just play a5, get rid of that bishop, then b5, b4. Yes, you can say your opponent can stop that from happening. But, you know, you just play rook to e, you're, you're up a rook. So this pawn, you play rook e8, that pawn is never going to go anywhere. So let's make a recap and let's look at one more line. And then we'll close this video. So, f5, d4, best move, right? Take, 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 take. c6, and now knight c3. Okay, take the bishop, knight takes e4, and I have to play d5. Take and is the best reply. Knight f6, 
bishop to g5, check, bishop back to d2, b4, allowing us to reach anywhere the fifth rank. What about, we went through a3 and knight f6, what about queen to e2, threatening a very strong discovered check, okay, queen to e5, and now you don't worry because knight takes, pawn takes, defending the queen, and we're simplifying, remember that we're up a piece, castle by our opponent, just take this one. And why, why this move? Because this is an idea, the idea of playing queen to d1, and this is one of those horrible positions where you end up thinking for such a long time. The idea of rook e1, how do we battle this situation? You don't want to end up thinking for so long here, so you will play bishop to g4. This is the best move. And now f3 doesn't do anything, because you're just going to check, and then castle. Or just play, I mean, bishop to d7, save the bishop, and then you can play king d8. So, well, let's look at this. f3 check king moves and now bishop e6 is the most accurate reply actually and there's nothing there's absolutely nothing here for our opponent rook pin in the bishop just doesn't do anything you can play king d7 queen is coming back to d6 to protect this bishop further so let's close the line there the last thing we need to see now and then we can finally close this video is after f5 d3 right this is the most solid move okay well take Take, as we know, and now knight f6. So white goes on with castling, and we play bishop c5. However, we did not explore, after the move knight to c3, and bishop to b4, castle. Now we know that we have to take, take, and now d6. This line, we haven't seen it at all, and it's from the fifth video of the saga. How to continue now? This is, well, you know, like, queen to d3. Now let's look at this idea. Uh, preventing the whole pinning in uh, g4, queen to e7, bishop to g5, pinning the knight, since the knight is putting pressure on e4, and the queen is also going to d3 to protect that pawn more, castle, rook a to d1 is met with, met with knight to a5, it's crucial to keep control of the square c4, the idea is to play bishop to e6, and when the, the, when the bishop is kicked out from that square, then we can we can uh, claim it. If white plays, let's say, for example, c4, with the idea also of playing c5, I encountered this move a lot. Okay, a6. Bishop will have to go. And now bishop to g4. Complete in development. Pin in the knight as well. That means that this... this. So let's look at this move. Rook to d2. Okay, well, king to h8 is the best move. And now, a move like knight to h4 to get it out of the way and play knight f5 doesn't bother us because you will just play queen to h7, I'm pinning the knight, knight to f5, and then, you know, you got double attack on this pawn, so you can take here, it's a much better position for black. And in this position, instead of that plan, what about h3 attacking the knight? Okay, well, now you know what we're threatening. Bishop takes. Queen takes in order to safeguard the pawn structure. Doesn't work because of knight to c4. And in this position, what if pawn takes? And, and our opponent says, you know what? The pawn structure is not that bad. The pawns are not isolated. Let's carry on. Okay, h6 attacking the bishop. Bishop taking will just doing us a favor. So after bishop h4, queen to e6. Finalizing the attack on that square. But also attacking h3. So after king to h2, protecting the more important target, knight to h5. And now we're threatening knight f4, where the knight will be sitting to the right of the father. Bishop to g3 seems normal, but now queen to c4 wins a crucial pawn, comes with an attack on the bishop. We will be able to trade queens, and we also are attacking the square f3. It's a completely winning endgame. So let's make a recap now. And uh, yeah, so that line was something that we hadn't seen before, although if you think about it, all patterns are the same. And if you've been watching the whole saga of how to beat the Spanish, then... A lot of the things that you don't remember will come to mind when the occasion presents itself. So d3, right? And now we know we have to take, take, knight f6. And let's go through this. Castle, right? Now, as we know, we play bishop c5. We've seen this line extensively. However, we haven't seen this one. So let's look at this. Bishop takes in, in c6. And we, we've seen it. Uh, pawn takes back. Knight takes e5. Castle. Knight c3 developing d6 attacking the knight giving up another pawn but now queen to e8 attacking the knight and now we went through moves like knight d4 and so on what about b4 this is the new this is the novelty and uh, the reason why i'm making this video is because whilst i play and i learn 
myself to master all of this repertoire that I'm publishing on YouTube, sometimes when I see an anomaly, I either think it's absolute rubbish or I think that someone's cheating, or at the very least, I want to know what to do against it. Now, obviously, this move is interesting because if you take the knight, they take your bishop, and our opponent kind of realizes that he's a little bit backwards in development. So what's the best move here? None of that, actually. Bishop a6, attacking the rook. Now obviously this rook cannot now obviously this rook cannot be saved because then you play bishop f2 check and uh, you are taking the rook if king takes you then you play knight to d5 check again and then when the king moves to g1 you can take in c3 with an attack on the queen and you also still have an attack on this knight and it's completely over it's like minus 440 or something so in this position after bishop a6 what if our opponent just takes our bishop and says you know let's do this okay fine take the rook Queen takes back, and I'll take the knight. Okay, queen c4 check. King h8. Knight to d5. That's fine, just take the pawn in e4. That doesn't work. If knight goes to e7 attacking the queen, it's not a problem. You just take the pawn in c5, you're completely winning this endgame. If instead of knight e7, white takes the knight, then rook a to e8, finishing development and threatening checkmate. This can only be saved with queen to b4, protecting the mate square, but now you just take in c5. This cannot be taken because of the checkmate. How many times I have to say there's a checkmate there? If bishop to a3, protecting the queen uh, more and allowing defense of the, back, of the back rank, well then simply queen takes in f2, is checkmate to follow. What if instead our opponent plays h3, which is the best move to uh, give an escape square, or as the Germans will say, luft to the king. Well, then queen to d5, and you're completely winning this endgame. So let's make a recap, and uh, let's finally close this video with the following line. So d3, take, take, knight f6, castle, bishop c5. Let's look at this one, bishop to c4. Okay, d6, and now two lines that we haven't seen at all during this saga are knight g5, or h3 now knight to g5 now can seem annoying because you can't really play knight e5 or like d5 idea because the d pawn is gone and you can't play the usual and uh, whatever you usually play against the fried liver type of attack with knight a5 and so on so what to do now okay play queen e7 and you don't have to worry knight to f7 doesn't do anything knight f7 you just play the rook to f8 and what if bishop to f7 check king to d8 okay bishop back to d3 because obviously if the bishop stays to that square close enough, you're going to kick the knight away. And when the knight moves, you can win the bishop. So bishop to d3. Our opponent might be just happy with the fact that we can't castle anymore. Rook to f8 comes now. And also because he want to wanna avoid knight f7 check, of course. So rook f8, knight c3, bishop g4, attacks the queen. The pawn is pinned. So queen to d3 now, knight to d4. Attacking the bishop. And that's going to be it. White doesn't have anything at all. Any advantage. Yes, we can't castle anymore. But we're going to play. After taking the bishop, we're going to play king d7. We're going to play h6. The knight will have to move to f3. But then we can take, take and uh, smash the pawn structure. Knight h3 is even worse. So that's it. If there's a counterattack, knight d5. Just take. Bishop takes back. But now knight e2 check. King moves. And now take the bishop, surprisingly. Well, not really surprisingly, the bishop was the defender of the knight, so now you're going to be winning the knight. So if rook if rook takes the knight, you're just taking in g5. And there's an attack on the queen, so you, you do need to take that knight. But now it's completely over, as you can see. So back in this position, we mentioned how after d6, our opponent might play knight g5 or h3. There's also another move I forgot to mention, uh, knight to c3 now. Now, as we've seen in the seventh video of this saga, we play bishop g4, but we went through knight d5 at this point, or bishop to g5. What if instead white plays bishop to e3? This is an important move to analyze because the bishop is, uh, our bishop in c5 is now being challenged. We haven't seen anything like this before, so you play knight d4 here, put more pressure over the knight in f3, and what is there to do? If the bishop retreats to e2, that doesn't work. Because you will just take the bishop. And there's two ways now to take back. If knight takes, then you simply take the pawn here for free. Queen to d5 seems to be attacking the knight. Seems to be a very good move. But now you take this, this knight. Pawn takes back. 
and now you take this bishop. The queen, ca if the queen takes the knight, you just withdraw the bishop to b6. You're winning this end game. Excellent pawn structure. If the pawn takes the knight, same thing, bishop to b6, and this is again better for black. If instead the white player takes the bishop in e3, then knight to c5 saves the knight. b4 attacks the knight. The knight will have to go, but now first you uh, play c6 with an attack on the queen. Queen back to d2, knight e6. Rook a to d1, queen to g5 check. King has to move. Rook to d8, protecting the square d6. Rook to g1 attacking the queen, but now queen to f6. It's a winning end game, so of course there's a million things that can happen, different and many different ways that many different moves that your opponent can choose to play. But you've completely neutralized the Spanish. But you've completely neutralized the Spanish opening with top best moves that you, you could have that you could have possibly played. And here in this position, after c6, you might ask, what about knight to c4, stopping knight from going to e6? Okay, well knight to d7, and after rook to d1, attacking the pawn d5 so that's the disadvantage of playing that move the queen will have to move again but this time we'll even be able to castle to make it even easier so in this position earlier we went through well obviously what we're playing now is bishop to g4 and after bishop to e3 we said knight to d4 what about the white player takes our strong knight okay well take back knight to b5 attacking the bishop Simply bishop to b6, nothing to worry. h3 kicking the bishop away, what to do? Bishop h5. g4, bishop g6. Now we got loads of attack over that pawn, therefore that pin was unremovable. And even if queen e4 here, nothing to worry. You just play e4, there's no counterattacks or anything. So it looks like g4 was not a good move. And, no, and so in this position, instead of g4, uh, that loses control of the square e4 forever, what about queen to d3? I'm pinning. Okay, well bishop to g6 comes now. And uh, the funny thing is that we're now attacking the pawn in e4 with two minor pieces. It's only protected by a major piece. So even if the rook comes, it's not very good. So let's say rook to e1 now, queen to e7, and you will castle long side. And uh, if instead white plays knight c3, for example, back to c3. Okay, queen to e7. And here there's a move I encountered which was annoying, which is bishop to d5. The idea is if we take the knight in e5, is sitting very well. And I didn't want to play c6, but c6 is the best move. I didn't want to play it because then the d6 pawn becomes weak. But after bishop to d3, now you will play d5 because this pawn is pinned. This is important. But look, let's do the very last recap. There's so many things that... Uh, so many, maybe potentially in the future, there will be some more lines to study about the, uh, the, the Spanish. But like I think we really have covered everything. Knight f6, castle, and uh, bishop c5. In the variation with bishop to d4, d6, and now let's look at h3. This is to stop bishop g4. This is important. What to do now? Now knight a5 is obviously possible. Okay, bishop to d3, saving the bishop pattern. Castle. And that's it. Well, the bishop are gone to b3, you can just take it. And now bishop to g5, h6. Bishop to h4, g5. Bishop to g3, bishop to e6. Black is better. A3 with the idea of B4, winning a piece. Okay, well, knight to C4 comes now. Bishop was safeguarding that square. And now we're going to B2. If this goes pushed, it's not a problem. Because knight B2 should be taking the bishop away from our opponent. If white tries to develop a queen E2 and put more attack over that knight, you can win this pawn. The knight doesn't get trapped or anything. Knight D2, queen E7. Knight to C4 looks interesting. And now the best move is knight to h5, ignoring what's happening here, ignoring the piece. But obviously we're threatening knight g3, which is a stronger move. The pawn in f is pinned. So bishop to h2, saving the bishop. Okay, well, g4. Again, ignoring the piece in b2. But now we're threatening to take this one, comes with an attack on this one. So it's a priority. So pawn takes, and now bishop takes. Surprisingly, now it looks like we are dropping a piece for real. Okay, knight takes, we're fine. Take this one. The pawn has to take back. And now knight to f4. Attacking the queen, preparing checkmate very soon. So if bishop takes, kind of the only thing left to do. Ignore that bishop and just check. Now obviously king h1, you just recapture this bishop. And you're threatening checkmate and that's unstoppable. If instead the bishop goes back to g3. Well okay, take it. The pawn is pinned, so king h1, queen h3. 
queen check, king moves, and now king h7, preparing the rook for an attack on the king. Uh, 